Hi guys, Jim. What he tells. A, a quick snippet, a small snippet of Q&As. I actually recorded these from three weeks ago with the BMW 1M. The episode of the 1M, which is 44, 45 minutes long. The Q&A, if I'd have used it on the same episode, it would have pushed the vlog into probably an hour's episode. So I, I didn't, it's all relevant information and I sort of want to still use the footage, but didn't want to push it into the hour mark. I touched base on sort of my views, on my opinion on what sort of causes the buffer trails. Lots of people asking off the back of a, a previous video what the buffer trails are, how they're caused. So it's sort of my touch on that. I go into the rotary extension bars, touch on them quickly. And then it's a bit of a, an education session on the whiteboard. At the end, about the differences between the services I offer. So a paint enhancement, a single stage, two stage, a multi stage. Touch on that briefly. So be sure to check them out and, and see what you think. This car behind me, a Merc C63 AMG. It's this week's work, it's this week's job. It's Wednesday, half past six, which is wrapping up for the day. Packing away. It's in for a two stage minor paint correction. So when we do the, the whiteboard a bit later, you'll be able to reference actually what the two stage is, what the vehicle's having. It's gonna leave the full paint protection, the full wheel, interior, calipers, exhausts, all that good stuff. For now, enjoy the Q&A, and I'll be back in touch soon. Now, I realize I've picked a terrible time to film this because below me is the washing machine doing its thing. So hopefully it's not making too much noise. But it is half past 10 Saturday. I've got quotes coming in very shortly. The one end's being picked up. Uh, so I need to get this wrapped up as quickly as I can. There's a couple of questions on YouTube to touch on quickly. Best editing on a car detailing channel on YouTube, in my opinion, and also just generally awesome. Uh, considering the amount of cars you sort out that have just been bought and not far off ruined by the dealership when polishing and buffing, could you explain what they're doing to cause all these buffer trails? Yeah, this was on the last episode on the Black A5 that it was a new vehicle to my customer. However, a used vehicle, a second-hand car, that someone had been over the car and mopped it and polished it and buffed it. Left a right mess behind. Um, I've had to move site. Hopefully you can hear me better here. The washing machine was right below the mic, so it was a bit noisy. The Black A5, the whole thing had been riddled with buffer trails. It wasn't pretty. And to the operator at the time, they were probably unaware of the fact that what they were leaving behind. They're not thoroughly checking the work down. They're not using the pan of wipes to strip out the filler and the residue and the oil that they're leaving behind. It drops back over time. So what they're seeing there and then at that point when finished probably looks okay. But as the days go by, the weeks go by, it starts to come to light and it's all crap. So buffer trails, there isn't one in particular, well, incorrect polishing techniques, be it hands-on physical movements of the polisher, incorrect product choice, be it pads or compound. It could be running the machine too fast. It could be running a too aggressive combination on the soft paint work. So something like the BM is quite a hardy, decent paint to work on, but take a flat black A3 or a flat black Tesla or anything that's a bit softer on the scale, you need to know what you're approaching before you put pad to paint. So in the wrong hands, a polisher can do more damage than good, be it a rotary or a DA, a dual action. A dual action, I use them all the time every job, more so now than the rotaries, but you can still cause damage of a DA if if you're not clued up. Uh, also to the, to the degree of, there are different types of buffer trails. They're all holograms, they're all unsightly, but sometimes they can just be mild, wavy, sort of flowing lines which have been induced by not thoroughly breaking the product down. So if you're polishing the car, it might be a refining pass, but if you're not full, abrasives are, most of them are diminishing abrasives, so they'll start so big, and as you work and work and work, they'll get smaller and smaller and smaller. Obviously, the smaller they get, the finer the finish. So if you're not allowing the brazier to get to that, if you're not working it and thoroughly working the product down, you might just be left with a bit of a, a hologram where it's just been a bit too coarse. There's still a long way to go or a whole new polishing set with a refining set, so a second stage. So that's when I did the cutting stage and the refining stage because this stage, it isn't leaving the best finish possible, whereas this one comes in and it's true. And also, Dirty pads, dirty, dirty equipment. So to the to the extent of residue control, you've you've seen me previously use the vehicle blower. That I blow the vehicle dry with to eliminate residue and dust and polish residue from the adjacent panels before I start the next panel. So 
So when I'm polishing, it's going to be kicking up dust. And if that dust is then settled on the first section of the bonnet, which I'm about to start polishing, I'll put my pad over that section. I'm then scoring dust and dirt and all sorts of unsightly foreign objects into the paint, which don't want to be there. So it's residue control, keeping clean, keeping clean and working clean, and actually having clean pads as well. So you've got a worktop and you've got a polishing pad, which is, this is the polishing face, but it's that way around, it's great. But sometimes you'll see them face down on a dusty worktop, picking up all the, goodness knows what off the surface and again dirty pad against the paint you're not only inducing holograms from not breaking the polish down but you're going to be inducing scores deep swirls so some of the more aggressive buffer trails are actually scratches where a dirty pad is so there's a mixture and there's an array uh, i never start a car with let's go to town and go hell for leather you would always want to start with the least aggressive product and uh, combination to get your results if it isn't enough at that point you step it up you'll get a more aggressive combination and gradually work your way to where you want to be but a lot of the time it is just a time thing it's just a quick <laughs> if someone if you're paying someone 70 quid to mop or polish your car within a day or a full scratch removal it it's not going to be pretty and it's not going to happen uh, 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 uh. another question i've been meaning to ask i've been meaning to answer for a while is what are these these are rotary extension bars they were literally Screw onto the bottom of the M14 thread rotary. Rather than put your back in plate and pad there, you're able to extend the body of the polisher away from the paintwork with a three inch extension. Which at that point you can either use a, a spot pad, a smaller spot pad, or an even smaller spot pad to access some of the more intricate areas. So, uh, it's not a terrible car, the one M. Maybe on the front bumper there's some intricate areas and recesses that you wouldn't be able to really get the, the machine into. The body of the machine restricts the access. Using these extension bars, the three inch or the bigger five inch. It would be unusual for me to use these with a big five inch pad, but with the smaller spot pads, uh, they're brilliant and it just allows better options and possible approach. Uh, links to these as well as most other things I'm using in the description on the video down below. Uh, if I don't have access to a van and a blow machine, a compressor, would a leaf blower maybe work? This is to replace my vehicle blower. I think what I've just been talking about with residue control, I'll use that to blow the vehicle dry to eliminate trap water and drips from the crevices and the badges and the mirrors. Uh, but also it's used to help with residue control. A leaf blower, yeah, it, it would. Uh, if you've got one in your armory already, go for it. It might not be as accurate and powerful as a dedicated vehicle dryer, but Stefan, great results. What pads are you using on the DA and rotary? Again, this is on the A5. Uh, the rotary, I used the 3M wool to make an aggressive cut where needed. And then on the DAs, it was the Meguiar's microfiber discs, the five inch disc and the three inch disc. For the refinement, it was the white Roops uh, foam finishing pads. Cool, okay, in a previous video, I spoke about what the differences are between my services. So a single stage, a two stage minor paint correction, and a multi-stage major paint correction detail. I'll touch base on some of them briefly, but uh, what is paint correction and what are we trying to achieve? I suppose what I'm trying to cover here, because uh, to a lot it might be just a whole new world and people are aware of sort of the spider webs and the paint swirls, but don't know much. So what we've got on the board, uh, you've got your body and your primer. So this is a cross section looking through the paintwork on a microscopic level, very much a magnified case. You've got your color coat, which of course is in this case Valencia orange on the BMW. And then you've got lacquer. So you've got X amounts of microns and color coat, X amounts of microns on lacquer, clear coat. So you can see you've got imperfections in the paint. You might have deep scratches, you might have light swirls, buffer trails induced from incorrect polishing techniques in the past. Uh, bird etchings, lime etchings, where it's etting to the lacquer, all of this contributes and builds towards an unsightly finish in the paintwork. So the paintwork is best when the lacquer is perfectly flat, when it's a nice flat surface, the sun or light refracts better off a flat, glossy, shiny finish than it does with all this going on. So the first service is the single stage paint enhancement, a once over, more so for the vehicles that are next to new, have been here before, that only need a very light lift or 
uh, vehicles that don't really want to be perfect, just a gloss enhancement detail, if you will. So it's a combination that's quite mild. It's always the refining stage. There's only so much you can do with the one stage. You go too aggressive with that one stage, and that aggressive stage itself needs following with a refining stage. You need a mild finishing polish with small abrasives that are going to jewel the paint and burnish the paint rather than cut the paint uh, with a foam finishing pad of some description. So at this point, we're very, we're removing very much minimal amounts of clear coat. So the paint enhancement, we're removing the top surface layer, the movement, the swirling, the marring uh, that you'll see as you walk down the side of the car in the sunlight, you'll see the movement and the wavy paint swirls and spider webs. That's really what we're aiming to achieve in removing here. So it's the very top minimal amounts of clear coat. That's a terrible line, but you get the idea. It's refreshed the surface, but there's still a lot below that would benefit from being cut out. So at that point we move on to a two-stage polish, which is, or has been actually more previously my most popular service. Uh, a two-stage polish, which you're cutting to get more into the finish, then you're refining it to make it a nice, true clarity. I sell it with sort of 70, 80% correction. So you're getting below some of the swirl with the deeper marks and rounding off some of the other ones. So you can still see, there are some protruding through that finish. Now, going to the, the major correction, which is a multi-stage machine polish, we're chasing perfection where possible, where safe to do so. So we're measuring the lacquer, we're measuring how much paint we've got to play with, but I'd never sell even a white detail package, the, the 1M, I'd never sell that as it's gonna be 100%. Sometimes it's just not possible, and you do the best you've been given. Uh, so it might be cases like this scratch here, it's very close to the edge, or you're gonna be striking through the clear coat. So do we want to, at that point, risk striking through and compromising the lacquer for the future 5, 10, 20 years in the vehicle's life? Or do we just sort of put it to one side, do as best we possibly can, and move on to the rest of the vehicle? With a major paint correction, we really are... The trick with a major correction is you do the least required possible. So you don't want to go to town and really blitz the vehicle and take off as much as you can. You want to, of course, preserve as much lacquer for future as you can. So you'll, it's a multi stage, you'll cut, you'll cut, you'll cut, you'll refine, you'll cut as many times as you need to, again, working to that safe parameter with a, with a clear cut level. Uh, so really, we're down here. We want to get as deep down into the, uh, the deep scratches as possible. Again, there are going to be some marks where it's, it's a severe scratch, it's, it's a key mark, if you will, or it's an abrasion or a scrape on the side of the bumper. These scratches look bad because they are sharp. The light, as the sun pours into the paint finish, the light refracts off the sharp scratch and it looks bad because it's a sharp edge. Whereas when we're doing the multi-stage major correction, some of these points we don't get fully removed altogether, they become very much rounded off, so it's a much softer shallow. It's not a sharp, aggressive scratch anymore, and it's a much more attractive defect, if that makes sense, to the eye. So I think that's quite a nice little slipper actually into what we're trying to do, what we're trying to achieve. As I say, I never sell a white detail as 100% perfection. It's 95% given the vehicle's severity, the condition, uh, and sometimes even the budget, of course, as well. We don't want to go, it's not an open check, but we give the customer an idea. Uh, I, I give the customer an idea of what to expect, but it's a timely process and it could be five hours this way or five hours that way. It depends very much on how the paint responds, how the vehicle responds, uh, and any anom anomalies, anomalies that we come across uh, on the way.